Hello everyone! Welcome to our Let's Play series of Valkyria Chronicles. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as uh, we escape. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I'm not sure how long this episode is gonna be, but this probably is the ending of Valkyria Chronicles. one, bro. Leon, it must have taken forever to finish building this. Where did you find the time? After we lost Isara, Casey and myself, well, everyone in the squad really came by to pitch in a hand. It was Isara's dream, you know? So, uh, it wasn't hard finding help. I don't suppose it was. Isara, you'll always live inside us. The dreams you left that day, now they're all of ours. Rest in peace. So tell me, bro, how far are we going today? This baby could take us clear across the sea if we want. Back home. Back to a free country. Our friends are waiting. Take us to Rangris. The 25th day of October, 1935. The death of Maximilian, commander of the Empire's invasion of Gallia, paved the way for truce between the two nations. After seven tumultuous months at war, Gallians everywhere looked forward to a time of hard-won peace. Squad 7 of the Gallian militia disbanded shortly after the conflict's conclusion. And its members began to move on, each following his or her own path. And here, at the end of their long struggle, I lay my pen to rest. Okay, so that was the ending of Valkyria Chronicles. It was a lot shorter than I was expecting. I, I mean, it was a the ending was a huge amount of cliffhangers and immediate solutions and Deus Ex Machina for no reason. Um, I liked I liked the, uh, the I really liked the fact that they brought back Isara in spirit uh, basically because um, she is she's pretty like she's a. Uh, this, this story could have been told. I, I said it before, I said it when she died. I think, was it when she died or was it after? This story could definitely have been told from her perspective. Because this... Uh, like, she dies a little bit... She dies too early for the whole development, the, the war... The, world, uh, the whole uh, war development at the end, for it to be her story in that part. But from the beginning... Uh... Even, like, even after her death, it would be an interesting exercise to tell this story from her perspective. 
Um, of course, you wouldn't say from her, you know, what were their own feelings and all that sort of stuff, but it, from her, from the perspective of the legacy that she leaves behind. Uh, and I think that would have been really interesting. Uh, I think the game tried to do what sometimes is done. The, the, the sort of, um, like, sudden solution to a problem at the end. Uh, that that you could have seen coming, but you didn't. Uh, like, I don't know. It felt too much like the eagles are coming at the end. If you ever know, if you know what the end of the Lord of the Rings is, the movies uh, or the books, um, it, it it felt too much like that. But it also wasn't set. The danger wasn't set up until the very very last end. It was it wasn't set up until the end of last episode, or the, until the the end of the episode before this one. And uh, I felt. That it could like, if they were in there for a little bit, a little while longer. If we had a mission to uh, to try to flee, that'd be inter that'd have been interesting. And the end, we like we could have been like, they're gonna die, they're gonna die, uh, and then they didn't. Uh, but that that didn't happen. Um, also, we could have like I think the the, the whole I, I'm still not over Folio. Uh, last episode, it was just uh, so many problems with that scene because all of a sudden Maximilian says, "I'm gonna blow up." And then, the, the and so that is the game being like, aha, I got you. And then immediately, Father shows up. No, I I unplugged the machine, and that's the game saying, aha, I got you. And uh, Father really didn't do anything wrong. Uh, like he knew she was gonna survive. Uh, like he betrayed. Like he betrayed the team, but in a really weird and convoluted way that he didn't need to do. But yeah, sure. He sh it, like he should be in prison, but l he d he didn't deserve to die. Just, like yeah, and at the to the very end, uh, Alicia doesn't have any agency whatsoever. In fact, he, even Welkin doesn't have a whole lot of agency. He could have had. They both could have had agency in the last scene, but it was just Folio all of a sudden being like, yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, the agency becomes. The, when I say agency, I mean the, the uh, you know who makes the decisions that change the plot, uh, and uh, the agency becomes apart from the decisions to where we're gonna fight, uh, becomes all Falio. He made uh, Al Alicia uh, uh, become a Valkyria. He found out about that. Um, he came uh, he came over here to save the day, basically, because he had the he unplugged the machine at the very last moment. He could have done it a little bit earlier, but he uh, honestly at the end, he, I mean, that's what he did. But it, I said he blew a fuse, and that could have very well been the the. It would have been an interesting ending. It was like, no, the machine didn't work, and then Welkin goes up there, and. Um, Oh, we're going to have more things. And Welkin uh, goes... Let's read. Upon retirement from the armed forces, Eleanor began and still manages a publishing outfit following her marriage to Largo, who punched her in the face. Largo, who punched the uh, carrot in the face, he's the, the women beater. Anyway, the point what I was going to say is that could have gone a lot very differently and there was really no reason for for uh, for uh, him to die. For Folio to die. And Rosie, who was a racist, is still a racist, probably. Travels Europa and constant to Oh, she's singing. Nice. Zach over here. You're going to need to pause to read this. Uh, he's the hottest person. Right? That's... I, sure. Absolutely. And uh, when established the Thousand Toy Factory. Mm, a reference, I think, to Jewish uh, tradition, maybe? I don't know. Uh, cries the the cries uh, the one that saved everything. Was he the one? Or, no, no. He's the Tank Manor. Tank Manor? Yeah, Tank Man. This is the one that saved everything. Schmidt, a f speed demon since the day he piloted Zara's airplane, and also designed an airplane that doesn't kill people when it crashes against them at 300 kilometers an hour. Uh, the woman with hair. After the uh, war's end, she confessed her heritage, shocking the masses. Um, let's see what happened. She remained single amidst many marriage offers. Okay. She could... Uh, yeah. Wait. Oh, it's just a recap. And be like, I am normal yet and now I'm not because look at all the electricity coursing through my veins my pupils have gone into the back of my head and yeah this is the scene that was super needless and it's just a scene for the sake of itself and I I I loved it <laughs> I loved it I absolutely did it I, I I don't like it but I loved it do you know what I mean 
I rambled about it. You should, you probably know what I mean. I rambled enough about it. It was super needless. As I was saying, like, it could have been just Welkin go up there and kill, like, if you want to give the morale of the story, just be don't kill people unnecessarily. He would have killed him and then Alicia would have come up and be like, no, the true Valkyria, whatever. And if you want to do that whole thing about blood rights or whatever, that's super problematic if you want to do that. But the game sort of focused on that a little bit. Um, and she would be like, no, I'm a Valkyria, I will save people, or whatever. See, this scene over here, that would have been murder. That would have been him, them cut in half. Because, of course, that's how physics works. Um, but, um, but yeah. They were, they, they, were, they had the, the, the doing it bonus, because they had been doing it since the beginning of the story. And that's why they didn't get cut up in half by the airplane. The airplane looked really cool as well. I wasn't kidding when I said this game has 5 million endings. It's still going. Mr. G! You gotta take us bug hunting again soon, okay? You bet. You know, I think you're ready for my top secret hunting spot. Yippee! <laughs> Thank you! We'll see you tomorrow! Yep. Go right along home now. Welkin Gunther. After the war, he returned to his studies. Many had thought the Galleon hero would rise to further fame, but Welkin had something else in mind. He returned to Bruel, there to realize his long-held dream of becoming a teacher. On weekends, he's often seen taking his students out on nature hikes. His is a peaceful civilian life, and he would have it no other way. PTSD racks his brain constantly, most likely, and he has nightmares every night, and that's why he probably tries to teach people so he can cope. And because it's the 40s, there's no treatment. They still didn't even call it shell shock at the time. Thank you for choosing Alicia's. Alicia fared better. Hey, better. How's most business likely. today? Hey. Hey you, what a surprise. Guess what? So I started selling the smoked cheese bread today and everybody loves it. Of course. Told you that bread was great. It's cheese bread, of course. Guess everyone in town agrees with me. Yeah. <laughs> Alicia Gunther. Trading in her rifle for a rolling pin, Alicia trained around the clock to pursue her dream. After many long months, she received her national certification as baker. On the same day, she married her sweetheart, Welkin Gunther. Together, the two opened Alicia's Bakery. It didn't take long for word to spread about her delicious creations. And now, even visitors from far away make a point of stopping to sample her fresh baked bread. How about you? How are your classes today? Ah, uh, you know, those kids never seem to run out of questions. <laughs> you know, they're amazing. Their curiosity's endless. So, then you're a kid too. You're as incurably curious as any one of them. <laughs> Speaking of kids, how's Isara been today? Conceived in, in chapter oh? six, most likely. <sighs> Look at her. She's like seven years old by now. Hey there. Have you been a good girl? Yep. I was real good. I was just helping Mama make some bread. I needed the dough all by myself. Oh, I wish you could have tasted the bread that dough made. Our customer said it was the best ever. Hey, Isara, that's really great. All right, you show me how and I'll help, okay? Yay! Come on, Papa, I'll teach you.
you notice how there were no Darkson in town? <sighs> Some things never change. The end. <laughs> that was a great ending, though. All things considered, that was really cool. I liked it a lot. And uh, we safe. And it's at the end. And it is the end. Man, that went on. That went on. Anyway, uh, that's, this has been Valkyria Chronicles. I, I really hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, cause I did, uh, I'm not like, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, ma I made the let's play in a different way than the way I, you enjoy the game. Cause there's a lot, the, the combat is slow. Basically. Anytime I had to redo anything, it is slow. It takes forever. There's unskippable cutscenes. Uh, the animations are slow. There's a lot of like going back and forth and, uh, that becomes, and it becomes taxing. And, and honestly, for me, that's, that was the biggest hurdle because everything else I just had the most fun the, all the like the cinema the, the photography in itself the the film the cinematic the filming I suppose or whatever the cinematic aspect of the game and even the storyline um, was a lot of fun I, I enjoyed it a lot I I think the there were some themes that were all over the place and there were some dialogues that were all over the place some interactions that were just plain bad um, oh no it's doing the cutscene thing the thing that consoles do Sega. no Sega shut up it's no no, st stop. Why do consoles do this? No, don't do this. Anyway, <laughs> I know why they do this. So that they can have their games on uh, on display for, for um, uh, you know, on a, while selling and just doing the cutscene instead of being on the main menu. Uh, anyway, the point is, I there were some things that were all over the place. And uh, that last dialogue between... <laughs> I, I laughed because that last dialogue between Walkin and... His, and um, um, and uh, Alicia was absolutely the dialogue that they would have had if they hadn't seen each other for uh, months or something. They was like, how is it going? And he's like, oh, I'm a teacher, you know? Kids never run out of cashins. And and she's like, oh, yeah, thought you were a kid yourself because they never had that discussion at all <laughs> after years of, of, uh, of being married. That's, that was just weird and more of, more of a... Uh, uh, a result of the game being written for the viewer than than necessarily written as if they were just having a normal daily conversation. It's it's just you know, uh, it, it it's it's it was funny. I I I liked I liked it. I liked it. It's it, that's the thing. It's like even though there's so much neat picking, there's so, so much cheesiness. There's a lot of cheesiness. This game is very cheesy. Uh, there were some situa There were some moments where the cheesiness ab where it was absolutely pulled off. Like it's seriously good uh, from an anime standpoint. Um, specifically in cutscenes, like uh, when they were, had superpowers and stuff like that. Even when the like the airplane didn't cut them up into, that was cool. That was fun. Where where the tower fell off and just this big spear in there. It's fine. It's just it's super cheesy, but it's like it's really fun. I I, I enjoyed it. Um, but the story takes itself seriously in other parts, and I think even in those in those cheesy moments, the story tries to take itself seriously, and it does. And those those moments that I just mentioned, the, the, it works. Uh, but other times it doesn't, um, and other times it's just plain weird, and there's no consideration to be had about that theme that I think is the theme of the game. Power uh, is not... It's, it's not power that you want to win a war, and um, although the game doesn't really answer what it is, which is good. Thank you, game, for not answering what is the, the key to win the war. There's like five or six ga different games of this, so there's plenty of time to tell that story. Uh, but hopefully they get their act together and make something that uh, that's a little, that flows a little bit better because I don't think I don't think the uh, let's see how long it took uh, I don't think like the story flows with a hundred percent things so that it doesn't tell me about 27 20 yeah 26 and a half hours sounds good enough. Anyway, that's going to be that for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for watching the Let's Play. Uh, let me know in the comments how you feel about the game and uh, how you feel about the series as a whole, if you have played it, and how you feel about how I feel about the game and obviously not about the series because I only played this one. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.